I tell you a little bit about our open source system um, that we re recently built, um, started in May and finished up in September, and now we're just kind of ongoingly working on it. Um, it's called Zen, um, but first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Coda Dojo, just in case you didn't know anything about it. Uh, it's a global movement of free volunteer-led computer programming clubs for children uh, from the ages of 7 to 17. There are now over 860 of them in 63 countries. We just got our 63rd country last week, Taiwan. We're hoping to get, I think, Vietnam this week, so that's brilliant. Um, so Zen itself is the community platform that we just built. It allows people to do a number of things. You can go and find your local dojo. Uh, if you run the dojo, you can manage it. You can edit your listing. You can put up events for parents and children to book tickets for their kids to a dojo. Uh, there's a forum as well for adults and for youths. Um, we're also using Mozilla Open Badges, which is a way for kids to display skills on their profile. And that's pretty much most of the system. And then on the administration side, on our side, we also have this process that you have to go through if you actually want to start a dojo. There are all these, there's a few forms that you have to fill out and on our side, just the administration. So this is basically the system that we built. Um, I wanted to make it pink, uh, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But we do need a bit of uh, UX, uh, UI uh, volunteers as well. So if you know anyone interested in that. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick, brief of the different pages that we have. Um, this is the My Dojo's page where you can edit your listing and manage your users and your events. This is if you run a dojo. You can also give permission to other people to help you manage the dojo as well. Uh, so this is a create event. It's a bit like Eventbrite, although it's a bit more tailored to dojo. So you can apply as a parent and then apply for your kids through the system as well. So you, know, you can have like an under 13 account and over 13 account and all this sort of thing. And that's the forums, which is running on NoBB, which is another open source system. Uh, so why contribute? Um, basically, it's a really easy way to volunteer from home. I have a lot of developers that come up to me saying, I'd love to mentor at a dojo. There's not one near me. Um, I can't get to it, but this would be a really easy way to do it from your computer at home. Uh, it's a great way to showcase your development skills. Employers love to see open source contributions. Uh, learn from experienced developers in the tech industry. Um, we have a lot of people from different places in Dublin who are helping out, uh, ranging from IBM to Microsoft. And then the system itself was built by Nearform, who run NodeConf down in uh, Waterford. So, um, so yeah, it's just a great opportunity to kind of learn from them and to do something outside of work with different developers as well. Uh, see peer coding reviews in a real world scenario. Everything has to go through a peer review process and experience continua continuous integration in a real world scenario. So I know most people are using it now, but some people aren't yet. So it's a great way to see how that works too. Um, these are the some of the technologies that we're using. We're using AWS for deployments. Um, we have Salesforce for kind of a backend reporting, um, automatic emails. Um, we're using Intercom, of course, for communications. Uh, NodeBB, as I mentioned, is a vibrant community, uh, which is open source as well. So if we want to make a change to our forms, we can just fork NodeBB or write a new plugin or something like that. Uh, Mozilla Open Badges. Uh, we're using a couple of Google technologies. We're also using log entries. And our front end is entirely in Angular. So yeah, we're also using New Relic, which is another locally based company. Um, GitHub for version control and issue management. Uh, Crowdin is the place that we're using for localization. Um, so we have a really handy integration there with Jenkins where it pushes back and forth to Crowdin automatically. And we already have the system translated into Portuguese, German, and Italian. We're working on Irish, Finnish, Norwegian, and a bunch of others as well. So if you know anyone who's interested in helping with that. Um, Node.js is our main coding language, uh, very relevant. Uh, our database is in Postgres. Um, we're using a framework called Seneca, which is also developed by Nearform. Um, it's a Node.js framework. Uh, we're using Fluid UI for wireframing and Karma for unit testing. So we have quite a bit of ways to go on our unit testing as well, but going forward, it's something we really want to work on too. So getting started with contributing. So I have a short link there that I just created today, um, a bit.ly link if you can remember it, or if not, you know, I can send it to you afterwards. Um, that's the landing repository, so that's where all the docs are. Um, there's a repository linked in there called CP Local Development. 
So that has all the information you need to get your development environment set up. Is you have to install Node.js a database and then just a few other things and that's pretty much it. Then it will clone all the repos that you need and everything automatically. Uh, there's a couple of documents in there which are relevant as well. There's a contributing doc and an architecture doc. You don't have to read them, but um, you might like to check them out. Uh, there's a suitable for beginners label on the repo. Um, these are all the issues that I think I could do in my sleep or I definitely think like an intern could do, you know, if they're just starting out. Um, there's also a hint provided label, so that's where I've actually gone, hey, look, this is where the files that you need to look at. This is kind of an idea of what's going on here. Um, if you need help getting set up, then all you have to do is email us um, and we can help you remotely if you need to. And uh, we also have our own Slack channel, so if you want to join that as well, there's already a good few people in there and it's kind of interesting because we have people from all different backgrounds um, involved there. And uh, there's two channels as well. So there's one just for chat and there's one just for like GitHub alerts, um, development kind of alerts. Uh, and then yeah, I am available for remote help and mentoring whenever you need it to. So I'm just gonna give you an example of kind of the workflow that you would go through if you're going to go ahead and contribute to this really quickly. So this is uh, an issue that one of my colleagues made there, I think it was like a week ago, no, three weeks ago. She just wanted some simple text updated. Uh, so you can see there it has the suitable for beginners label. Uh, it's like normal priority, it's got hints provided, and you know, there's even like what section of the system you're gonna be working on. And then we have like a milestone, this one is uh, we wanted it completed by the end of the year if possible. Um, so yeah, basically it's just, changing the text when you award a Mozilla open badge to somebody. And the reason for this is because it used to say, are you sure you want to award this badge to X? Whereas that didn't work very well for some languages to translate it, so we wanted to change it to, are you sure you want to award the badge to the below ninja? So this is how I started. I First of all, now once you get set up with CP local development, you'll have a few different repositories in that workspace then directory. One of them is this CP Zen platform um, repository, which is our front end um, repository. So that's like the easiest way to get involved if you wanna do something small there first. So make sure that you're up to date with master, do a git pull. And then you can check out two new branch. That's me checking out two new branch at the same time as creating it. Um, and I'm doing it with the issue name as well, the issue number, and just like a brief description of what the issue is about. So then make sure that you're running your um, development environment. Now this is all in the docs as well, but this is just kind of just give you an idea of the workflow. Um, so once you know, you'll know it's running once you see this listening on uh, localhost 8000, which is where if you go to your browser, you'll see the map with all the dojos on it. So next you would make some code changes. Um, in that particular issue, I had linked the two files that were relevant. Uh, this is the template file here which is just, and you can see we, we have this little um, I18 key, that's like how it gets read into the translations file. So this is me here updating um, the template and then the translations file. So then obviously you check your changes, test it, make sure it's working, uh, which it is. So commit your changes and push your branch, really simple. There's doing a git commit my send, there's a couple of pre-commit hooks in there which are really handy, like a linting one, so much less chances of something going wrong and it will run automatically run the unit test for you as well. We want our unit test coverage to be a bit better, obviously. Um, and then you push up your branch and open a pull request. So there's my pull request that I opened there today. Um, so basically then after that, someone has to approve it and I will deploy it as soon as I get the chance. Um, obviously before that it will run through Jenkins, so when this gets merged into master, it runs through Jenkins, but it runs the same like pre-commit hook checks and all that kind of thing. The on only thing that it I does, I guess, that it doesn't do locally is like it does that crowd in push and pull thing I was talking about earlier. So this is our top list of features that we want to do. Um, I mentioned that we have like an event system and we have Mozilla open badges. We'd like to link those up so that once you uh, youth attends like say 10 events that they automatically get the Mozilla open badge for attending 10 events. So just hooking up those two services. Um, collect more information about individual dojos and um, just for our own funders and for so that we can push the system in whatever way we need to. Um, redesign of the events uh, section. Um, parents are often not tech savvy who actually bring their kids to dojos, so we wanna make it as easy as possible for them to know how to book a ticket. 
um, a dojo statistics page just so that an individual dojo admin can see all of their statistics so that they don't come to the foundation every time asking us. Um, so here's a sneak preview of the Mozilla Open Badges that we're actually launching tomorrow. Um, we just got these redesigned, so there's a, you can actually be you know beginner, intermediate, advanced JavaScript person, even if you're a kid, uh, you can still be advanced. Um, yeah, uh, attendance badges, we also have Scratch, um, I think they're really cute. Uh, you don't have to be a coder to help out, so I know there might be some non-coders here, you probably know someone who could help out. So like I was mentioning with uh, Crowdin, you can help to translate. We still have quite a few languages, we um, only just got started in Irish this week actually, so. We could definitely do with some help there. And um, there's a short link there as well, or I can send it to you later if you need to. Um, we also have Klingon Pirate and Lolcat. Um, you know, so it would be it would just be funny, you know, for the kids if they had that there. Um, so yeah, you can get involved in the conversation on GitHub as well. There's an issue label called Request for Comments, and they're usually issues where I'm not really sure if you want to do them yet, or I'd like a second opinion on it. Um, you can also get involved by visiting the forum and starting a conversation. Um, help us manage issues by closing issues that are no longer relevant or confirming if something is a bug or not. Uh, and then encourage your local dojo to use the events and badges features. So. And yeah, just one last thing then, we're actually hiring. We're hiring a technical education content lead. It's not a coder, but it's more like maybe uh, someone who has programming experience who wants to do more of the education side of things. Uh, so someone who is passionate about Coder Dojo, proficient in coding languages that are used in dojos. Um, and then if you want any more information, just ask me and there's also a short link there. Any questions about that? I know it was quite fast. Yeah.